In, in the time I have left, mm. uh, you of all people, mm. a kid who grew up in a stucco house in the valley, mm. now lives in a baronial hall. You say you wake up and can't believe you still live in it. Mm. You live in it in mm. Highgate, is it pronounced? Yeah, Highgate. Higgit. Higgit. In London, <laughs> where Karl Marx and others are buried. Uh, uh, many dreams have come true as, mm. as with an Aladdin's lamp for yeah. you. And you make fabulous movies in the true sense of the word. But you have to deal with a lot of bastards that get over <laughs> past them to do this. Yeah. What kind of thing takes the fun out of it for you, Terry? Oh, Jesus, Dick. I don't know. <laughs> well, then let's move on oh. to something else. Do you have any hobbies? <laughs> what takes the fun out of it? No, I was going to mention a name. Uh, let me throw a name what? at you. Scheinbaum. Uh, Scheinbaum? Is that Scheinberg. Not... Schein... Let's get the name Scheinberg, sorry. Sidney Scheinberg. I'll give his address on this program I as well. I changed it to protect the guilty. <laughs> Go ahead. No, we made a little film called Brazil. I mean, it's yeah. an, it, it, this is what kind of gets under the skin occasionally. You make a film, and uh, it's released around the world except for America, um, because a different company has it in America. You get Robert De Niro to play in it, Jonathan Price, not playing a Eurasian this time, mm -hmm. in the film. And uh, and you, got, you do a film that's accepted around the world as a good film. You then take it to Hollywood, to a studio, which paid a little bit of money to get it, and they decide they want a really a different film. And I said, well, wait a minute. Why do you want to change the story? Why do you want to change the ending? Why do you, don't, because, because if you do, more people will like it, is what they say. Well, that's very nice, but this is a story we agreed to tell. We're storytellers. Mm -hmm. And um, they tried to change it. And I had to then do things like take out full-page ads in Variety saying, Dear Sid Scheinberg, when are you going to release my film Brazil, signed Terry Gilliam, which is a very bizarre thing to do because Variety is it pages and pages of zeros and dollar signs and money, money, money. And mm -hmm. in the midst of that, to see this rather human plaintive plea is a real shocker. Yeah. And, uh, and I never worked again in the town, I think, after that. They were right. They said, you can't fight City Hall, you'll never work again. Mm -hmm. And um, then I made Bunchaus and then I made Fisher King. It's very yeah. interesting. They're, they really do believe, people in Hollywood are living in fear the whole time, and they believe you can't take on the authorities, you can't actually try to protect what it is you do without yeah. paying some terrible price. And I am almost living proof that uh, that theory is not totally correct. But I suppose if even people going back as far as Raymond Chandler can be believed, by mm. the time they've been there long enough, the reflex, the guts, the... I mean, that's, where the, that's where the problem it's lies. It finally dies in you. And but you there's where the problem lies. That's why I live in Hagate in mm -hmm. London. I live 6,000 miles away from it because I, I, I couldn't withstand that just like most people can. Little by little, it claws away and you begin to think like them. You accept their values, their standards, and all the magic is taken away. So I live in London and fantasize. How did they manage never to be blamed for the screw-ups of things or the fact They've got that nothing they... else to do uh -huh. but to avoid being blamed. That's what their job is, basically. Well, then also there's that terrible phenomenon where they hand out cards and if people who like the percolator lid in a scene yeah. say they like the scene and don't yeah. say for what reason, they decide something's good. Uh, strange things are done. I mean, democracy is a they... wonderful system, but, but yeah. I didn't know that democracy sort of entered into art. Uh, and storytelling. Storytelling is about you know, people with ideas, and, and which are usually special people, telling people things that they haven't thought of or, uh, or observed or ways of looking at the world in a different way. And that seems to me the job and people should be, they either accept or reject that view, but at least allow the story to be told so that people can reject or accept it. We've, have you had a, some real heartbreakers? Where, where, where were you in which film? where they suddenly had to cut the budget and you had to take out a lot of stuff, and I believe you lost, if, unless I'm confusing two mm -hmm. things, Sean Connery, Brando, no, that am was, I getting a lot yeah, of stuff on me? Yeah, but they're all, all the films are the same. I always have yeah. to cut out my favorite bits. Usually the reason I made the film is the first thing that ends up yeah. <laughs> out. Um, now, Munchausen was this film that um, we set out to do the impossible, and, uh, and it was supposed to be Baroque, fantastic, un just bigger than anything you've ever seen. It ended up being almost bigger than everything you've ever seen, but it's, it's pretty big, but it was an absolute nightmare because uh, we had a producer who was mad, who um, was trying to make the biggest film in Europe since Cleopatra, and despite the budget being a fraction of what Cleopatra's was, was determined to do this. And, uh, and basically, I got the blame. It had nothing to do with me. I'm totally innocent. I want the world to know this. Nothing to do with me. No, here, come here, come here. Hold no, on one second. Yes. Let's just, just get this. There's a lot of people all over the world. This oh, is the, no. I mean, I think the audience has been bothered by this the whole time. I mean, you can't That's con right. I mean, I've been talking. Nobody's concentrating. They're watching the button. Is it going to fall or not? Well, 
a, there we go. a, a meddlesome woman from the audience <laughs> keeps coming up and saying, you've got to get that thing sewn on. These ladies can do that kind of work for you. But you're... <laughs> You've got the audience that could have fixed that button. If that it, shows they care. They care. That shows your fabulous director's eye that with all this going on, you were able to see that little distracting thing there that was stealing the scene. Now, uh, how, how does that relate to this what we've been? E I don't know. But this is an ego fighting, fighting to the death, and that button was not going to get well, in the way of me blathering on about nothing. Well, the sad thing is that uh, the, but the budget here doesn't allow me to have this button sewn on, so I just have to. I'll, I'll hold it for the rest of the show. This won't be too distracting, will it, if I just... No, there's no problem at all. We'll yeah. just keep talking yeah, about this. Now you're blocking my shot. <laughs> By the way, we, we were talking earlier during the break about the fact that the old actor, Walter Brennan, once told me there are a hundred tricks whereby you can screw up the other person's shot mm -hmm. and they don't find him until too late. And, yeah. uh, did, did you find the business full of this kind of... Uh, no, no, actually, vile... I, did, I, I did actually have the experience of working with the greatest in that line, and it's, it's a lady called Valentina Cortese, who's an old, she was a silent movie star, yeah. and she went, she married Richard Bayshart, she's done everything, she's a great Italian, she's a real endangered species, she's an old time star. And she was playing the Queen of the Moon opposite Robin Williams in, in Munchausen. She also had a, another part in the thing. And I've never seen a woman, she's very small, she's about 72 years old at the time, and these young, healthy, virile actors and, and, and actresses being trampled by this woman who had this incredible ability, no matter how far the camera was away, it could be hundreds of meters away, and she still knew where the crosshairs were on the center of the lens, and whether she was wow. supposed to be on the side of the frame, she was in the center. And it was like, it was like, you know, a rugby game. These, the, actually, some of these really young, strong actors came to me in tears saying, you've got to stop her, she's hurting us. She kicks, <laughs> she steps, she elbows, she gets in there, and she's always in the center <laughs> of the camera. And she's wonderful, and I, I don't know. Those, those people should be encouraged. That's right. Those, those people should be on Mount Rushmore. Those yeah. are the important people I mean, in the world. I mean, the rest I mean, of us can be mediocre, but yeah. let, let a few people shine like that. <laughs> I like the fact that you, you come up with answers, uh, Gilliam, I must confess. <laughs> you uh, and Betty Davis. I mean, I said, well, who's the worst pig you ever worked with, as a joke? And she said, Miriam Hopkins. Right away. <laughs> just came right away. That's the point of these shows. Yeah, we can actually say the truth, finally. Fun. Right out there. Name names. What do they say, quickly, what do they say when they tell you it's not going to be any good, and then you go ahead and do it, and it is good, and then what do they say when they're supposed to eat humble pie or crow? It's incredible how good they are at it. I mean, I think they train daily to do this. They have no shame, these people. People who swore they would never work with me again suddenly say after it's been successful, well, Terry and I have got a relationship that goes back quite a long ways. It doesn't matter, it was an awful relationship. We, we got no go. time left. No, it's over. Here, I want That's you to it. have no. this, and I want to thank all the little people who helped me win this. Terry <laughs> Gilliam, please come back, we'll finish the sentence.